Now throughout the mountain region and some other regions, these stone basement structures are actually located all over the map. So in today's Valheim build guide, I'm actually going to be showing you two different versions of a build. Firstly, we have the ergonomic mountain home built with minimal materials. And secondly, we have the impenetrable cusp, which extends all the way deep underground into a basement layer. It even has its own fireplace, bedroom. And again, guys, I really want to say thank you so much for all your support on the last video where we built a huge treehouse like structure on top of one of the mountains coming out of the plains. Since I've started covering Valheim I was actually super worried because when I first started covering the game it was so small it just come out in early access and I think my first video got like 20,000 views which is really low for me but then that video took off to over half a million views now and now the game sold over 3 million copies and I think that's just a testament to how amazing this game is so if you guys could take a moment to just hit that like button once again it really helps push these videos out to everyone on YouTube Ah, the mountains, an inhospitable environment in Valheim. And in today's video, we will be making a house here out of a pre-existing structure. We have to do no work whatsoever. So, essentially, all over the mountain region, since the whole world is randomly generated, you have a chance of finding these sort of broken down houses, but they're super boring and not very exciting. So what you're going to be looking for is these ruined structures, because these are underground houses, essentially. You can very easily turn this into a home. Now, if you actually go down the stairs here, there is usually like a secret treasure chest at the bottom. You can actually find some uh, rubies and obsidian. Just put a crafting bench nearby like that and we are good to go. Now I should also mention that a really good way of making this impenetrable is if you want to, you can actually mine all the way around the edge here and this rock formation continues downwards. So essentially you end up with like a moat around a pre-existing stone structure and then if you just like, you know, make the door here and you have to jump to sort of get in, nothing can attack you apart from the snow drakes which fire snow at you. But if they can't see you, they can't attack you, so you're all good. So the first example structure I want to show you guys is the easy to do wooden structure. So whenever you come across one of these in the world, you can literally just build a very quick base, put a portal inside it and use it as like an access point to get all the way across your map. So let's start out by putting a door just here and then we can go all the way around the edge. Here. I own my good friend Seven Fangs a huge shout out for this idea because he came up with this originally and I'm just showing you guys how to build it. So check out his channel down below. Oh, it's so perfect. It matches perfectly. Oh my God, it was meant to be. So the next thing we're going to do is add a roof layer and it's really simple. We're just going to be using the 30 degree roof. And we're just going to go all the way around the edge, making sure that we don't leave any gaps in between the roofing panels. So far, we've built the first layer of the roof, like so. And then obviously, we're just going to start adding the second layer. And we should end up with a small sort of hole in the center of the roof, which will fill with a chimney in just a moment. So now we have completely finished the roof and we've got a nice little chimney on the top. So let's go outside because we need to fill in this hole at the top here so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be using the 45 degree thatch roof and i'm literally just going to put this over the top of this hole and then all of the smoke is basically just going to come out of that hole at the top here but no rain will actually be able to come through so essentially we're going to want the fireplace in the center of this structure so now as you guys can see all the smoke from the fire is going out of the roof there the next thing we're going to do is add a wooden floor to our current structure. Now, if you like, you can put this into the stone, but I personally prefer to attach it to the structure we already have at the edge here. And if you guys could just take a moment to let me know in the comment section if you like these sections that are like sped up with me still building areas of the flooring and just general structure, or if you'd rather I just cut them completely out of the video. So as you guys can see, I've actually left like a little hole for the smoke to actually rise out of. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish this section off. So this is the first easy build rendition of our house here. And we can go ahead and open the door like this and close it. And we've got like one floor up here. I have had to leave like sort of a big L-shaped gap here. Just so firstly you can walk underneath it. 
And secondly, you need to allow enough room for the smoke to actually exit the top of the building. Otherwise, you actually get a lot more smoke inside. If you want to reduce that, you can literally just raise it a little bit just so it's got a bit more room for the smoke to actually escape. Anyway, coming inside, you guys can see after the first floor, I haven't actually built another floor. You have room to build two floors if you wish, but I've just left it as a really simple sort of little camping hut here where you have room for your crafting stations and a bed to sleep in. So that's it for our first build, but now I'm going to be showing you how to build a castle. And obviously to actually build this, we are going to need a crafting table and a stone cutting table. If you don't know where to get a stone cutting table, I've already made a guide linked in the description on how to get iron, and then you can build one. So we've got our stone cutting table and our crafting table set up. Now let's build. Now I'm going to be using the stone wall two times, one times for this build since it's what the game actually uses as well. I'm also going to start building on the outer edge just here like the procedural generated version has as well. I'm also going to be building exactly on the edge of what the game's already built just here which is how I'll get the perfect sort of circumference circle just copying what's already there pretty much. I will be adding windows and an entrance later, so don't worry. Next, I'm going to get the stone pillars and I'm going to position them like this. And we're going to get a iron gate entrance. Now for the door, you have a option. You can either go for a wooden gate or you can build a iron gate. I actually prefer the iron gate for this build because it's a lot more sturdy as well. So we're going to build an iron gate, but for that we also need to build ourselves a forge. And there we go. We're going to set it into the wall a little bit and then we can start expanding on our wall structure. And the reason we're going to be stacking these blocks on top of each other like this one on one is so that you don't end up with any gap. If you start blending the blocks into one another, then it kind of just ruins the uniform nature of the outside of the castle. I will be talking to you about how you can cover up these gaps and different sort of aesthetic things at the end of the video though. Beautiful. Now we're three layers up so far and the outside of the castle is looking really nice as well. Now, if you guys want to take it an extra level, you can actually build staircases into the bottom of the castle. So it kind of just ends up looking like a sort of base layer, if you can imagine this going all the way around. All right, let's go ahead and open our iron gate. Next thing we're going to want to sort out is some kind of structural... Now, it is possible to build like a stone structure around the edge here, but essentially once you get to a certain point... The stone structure will start to break because there's nothing supporting it unless you build a central pillar system which is possible but it means that you kind of lose your whole basement layer because there's an awkward pillar in the middle so i don't really want to do that instead i want to actually build a beam system and build like a wooden floor structure so to do that i recommend that first we need to close this gate we want to build our wooden floor structure going out from the edge like we did with the wooden hut There we go, and we've got plenty of room to pass under here as well, so we can access the downstairs layer. Let's just build some beams across to make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, though. There we go, and we can still walk underneath it, so that is perfect. So since we can't use this area for a floor, we might as well build the next set of stairs here. So as you guys can see, if you position the stairs correctly, you can actually build them into the wall itself. So I'm just placing these blocks round like so. And then if I go back to the staircase, you guys can see if I position it just here, can still build a staircase that basically maximizes the amount of space you have. You might just have to go back and forward sort of refilling bits in. But you'll basically end up with a much narrower staircase compared to the one that was pre-built down here. And that means you just have a lot more room to actually play with everything. Now building the staircase is a little bit fiddly because you kind of have to orientate the stairs in the right place. So they sit partly within the wall and partly outside of the wall.
So now we need to sort out the front entrance because it's looking a bit boring right now. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to build a archway across from each one of these pillars and it's going to cross over in the middle. Like so. Another one here. Another one here. And then we've got one for the door. Very nice indeed. And then next we're just going to be adding another layer of stonework on top and then we can just carry up the staircase beyond after we finish this next layer. Now as long as these stone steps are sitting within the wall you don't need to actually worry about reinforcing the underside with stone. I'm just doing it because, you know, traditionally castles would look like this. Load-bearing stone would essentially support the staircase. But if you want a little bit of extra storage room underneath, don't worry about deleting some of that block work. And then make sure you test the staircase so you can run up and down without getting stuck on any protruding stonework. You have to work back and forth and add like little one by one blocks in between just to cover up any holes that don't impede you using the staircase. And then we can start building the next floor and you guys will notice that I'm using once again these wooden floorboards but also this ceiling is actually super high. I kind of prefer the high ceilings especially when you first walk into a location. It just makes it a lot easier to look around and actually use the space. But if you want you could probably fit like an extra floor in here easily if you needed to. And then I'm just going to be making a banister for the staircase and adding the beams along it as well. And once again, I'm just testing back and forth if I can actually walk up the staircase so I don't get to the end of the build later and realize, oh, there's actually not enough room here. And then we're just building up the next layer of flooring. Once again, just stacking blocks atop one another. Super simple design. And I was also figuring out how the windows are actually going to look, but I'll explain how they work in a moment. So the windows themselves are two by one block wide and I'm basically going to be putting the archway in between the windows so that they kind of point outwards and that's going to be sort of an architectural feature above the windows. They kind of have this sort of pointing outwards piece of stonework and then I'm also going to be adding a staircase to the window so you can kind of walk up to it and sort of just look out or maybe even fire some arrows at any enemies below and a little platform as well so you can easily see everything. And then next I'm going to be building a load bearing structure again just to make it look realistic. You don't need to build a load bearing structure underneath it but I just prefer to. And I actually noticed as well I'm going to need to remove this window because it's going to get in the way of my stone staircase that leads up to the roof here. So I did end up actually destroying one of our three windows there that looked up towards the mountain. But don't worry we're going to have an amazing view on top once we get there. I also come back downstairs to the basement layer to actually do some sort of archway reinforcement on the underside of that staircase to make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. And then I also come back to building the hearth areas archways which I'll be putting a fireplace in before the end of the build. Alright so we've done these stairs all the way to the top and now we just need to sort out the roof. So we're going to need to build stones all the way around the edge here and then we'll build a roof on that. I'm going to put a curved piece on the window so they have a bit of an archway still. We don't ruin that aesthetic. So now we're going to be building out the wooden floor which is basically the roof of the building. And again, I just need to make sure that you can easily pass in between the gap that I left into the interior of the building. And 
Now, one of the issues we currently have is even if you have a floor above you, the game still says you're not actually sheltered with a roof over your head, which you need to obviously sleep. So we still need to put a roof over our head to actually use this area as a house. So for this, I am using the core wood columns and I'm just stacking them around the outside of the building. And then I'm using the horizontal core wood just to go all the way around the outside edge. Now, if you like, you can actually make this even taller. I haven't actually done it because I kind of like a short sort of stubby roof on this build. But if you have it taller, it means you can kind of stand on the balcony and sort of peer out and shoot enemies below a bit easier. The next thing we're going to be doing is building the roof. And as you can see, I like methodically go around and make sure each piece is facing towards the center. I am using the 30 degree roof as well here. And then I build out a little banister as well, just to kind of protect people from dropping down the stairs, even though you don't take any damage from this height. All right, so we've pretty much finished our roof. I will need to build a ladder on top just to build a chimney like I did last time to stop, you know, the uh, actual sheltered buff arriving when you're not standing in the middle. As you can see, if I stand directly in the middle, that snow falling in the middle stops me getting the shelter buff. But if I move to the side, I then get the shelter buff. So filling that hole in the middle is actually very important. So for the hole in the roof, I'm using the 30 degree X cross beams, and then I'm putting two beams across them, which will then allow me to put the roofing panel on like so, and it gives a sort of nice finish to the roof. I'm also going to be adding some dragon heads on the edges and then extending the beams so they kind of look like wings or something and that just kind of gives you a nice finish to the top of the roof. So as for the outside stone structure, it's kind of got these sort of voids because all the stone blocks are stacked on top of each other. Now not everyone might like that sort of aesthetic so you can actually make your castle a little bit more bulky by using the stone pillar. You can kind of accentuate it and make sure it's sort of outside a little bit or you can kind of push it all the way inwards. So now you guys can see this pillar here extends all the way to the top of the battlements and you can do this all the way along each edge of the castle and it gives it a sort of different aesthetic but it's really up to you whether you do this or not. I've done it around some of the castle and I kind of like the more three-dimensional sort of look it gives it and it also exaggerates the balcony as well. So now we've finished our build, let me give you guys a tour around the furnished building. I've put these uh, stakes just for now around the outside because to be honest I probably won't be in here too often and coming in you can see there is a nice hearth that's been placed just here basically into this recessed fireplace that we've created and it has a really nice appearance i just need to add some like stag heads or something um, on these item stands to finish it off then we have a little storage area some rugs and this is actually just a bench here so people can sit here and relax and it also kind of functions as like a barrier to stop you from dropping down. In fact, let's take a quick look at the basement down here. Currently, I've not really done a lot to it. I'm just using it as a basement for storage, but you can build like big items down here if you wish, and you can even remove some of the staircase, remove, replace it with a wooden staircase and have a forge inside if you want. But personally, I think if I do build a forge uh, and a smelting area, I'll actually have it outside and maybe sort of extend the wall a little bit over there and build like you know a sort of ditch around the house or something just because i think that'll look a lot cooler um anyway let's go upstairs you can see i've got some nice flag decorations just there and now we're in the bedroom area which is also the workbench area as well it's fully upgraded at this point in early access level five we've got a fermenter here as well and it kind of just looks like you know a working man's sort of home or like a lighthouse keeper or something and then I put some braziers hanging on the roof extension at the top here that we built earlier. So you can kind of look out and shoot things from up here, which is a pretty cool little sort of viewing platform. Sadly, it's a misty day though, so you can't really look into the distance. But you can appreciate the surrounding environment from here. And there's another brazier that sits above the door down there. And now let's go up to the roof. So here we go. I really like the roofing area, actually. I was thinking of putting a table here, but currently I just have a portal. 
Probably put a few different portals around though because there's plenty of space. But for now I didn't want to ruin the panorama view down to the ocean and the plains and the marshland over there. In terms of location, this is quite a good area. We've got the dark forest, the marsh, the mountains and the plains all in one area. And it's really close to some other locations as well. So a really nice sort of central base. You guys can see those stone sections extend a little bit out of the way there. And I've got a little jack-o'-lantern on here too, which is cool. Um, I've also got some stone rocks. So, you know, you, you can imagine like just sort of throwing them at people trying to attack you. But um, if I wanted to make this space more usable, I think I would have actually built this a little bit higher up just so I could jump out the side and shoot people from the edge. But um, I kind of left it like this anyway. I have also contemplated making this a stone floor so I could have a massive bonfire on the roof since bonfires don't actually react to rain. So it kind of be like, if you could imagine that scene in Lord of the Rings, you know, when it's like the beacons of Gondor are lit. Gondor calls for aid. And then like you could have like a series of, of buildings down the mountain that people would live in and, you know, slowly across my world, it could send a signal back to your home base or something. I just, I, I have wet dreams about the thought, guys, seriously. Let me know what you guys prefer. If you are going to be building a huge castle here as well, or if you instead will be building a small little hut. And of course, if you enjoyed this build, please do check out the link in the description. And of course, if you... Guys, before you go, if you could just drop a like on this video if you reach this far because it massively supports the channel. It really helps me out. And I'll leave a playlist linked down below with all my build ideas in the description so you guys can check that out. But thank you so much for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.